What you are going to be completing today is worth 25 product points and you will need this as your base drawing for our 75 point painting, um, product point painting that we will be completing before holiday break. So to begin with this, you need to make sure that you have the correct paper. So in your Calvert High folder, there are watercolor pieces of paper that are on the side with the W. There are small pieces in the front. The larger pieces are behind. And you are going to gather up minimum of six. We already did a practice drawing, so you should have an idea of what we're doing. Six different circles ranging from the size of the your hand down to like the size of a nickel or a quarter. And you need a variety of of different ones and I just gathered things from my kitchen and my recycling bin and you are going to do yours lightly in pencil I'm gonna do mine in heavily in pencil so you can see it the first one we're gonna start with is you're gonna pick your largest object and you're gonna off center it and then you're going to not leave it centered in the middle it either has to go up or down and you will trace that first circle and we are going to be building and using concentric stacks, which means for the first one, you have to have a stack of either four or five. So you're trying to center in the middle. It should not be sitting lopsided or off-centered like this. Like we wouldn't put a circle sitting off to the side like that. And you will then put your next circle in and you're tracing to try and make them as even as possible for your first stack of four. And if you have five and they fit well together, you can do five, but first stack has to be minimum of four concentric, not off-centered. We're not doing any off-center. For the next ones, you're going to be doing a stack of three and a stack of two. One of your stacks has to go out on the uh, like diagonal corner from wherever you are. So we're gonna do a stack of three and a stack of two. So I'm gonna start here. This is gonna be my stack of three there. Um, your stack of two, I'm gonna put here. So you have options between these two. One has to go out on a side, one has to go out on a corner. And you can choose which one of these you want to be a stack of three and which one you want to be a stack of two. I'm gonna do a stack of two here now you absolutely still need to downsize your circles when you do this. You cannot just use the same size and move it out to the edge. You like if I use the same size here and I just slid this out to the edge, out to the edge, those are not concentric and the circles would not be even. They'd be thin here and thicker in the middle. So please make sure that you are changing it up. So this is going to be my three and I have my two. So I have a four and then a three and a two. One has to be in the corner, one has to be on a side, and then you're going to do a free floating one somewhere in this empty space. Okay. Now, the next one is either going to be a stack of three or two, and it must intersect. So I wouldn't pick necessarily the biggest one again, but I'm going to pick one down from my largest size, and I'm going to intersect, actually, I'm going to intersect these three. So it's going to overlap, and I want to make sure when I'm overlapping that I'm creating spaces that are large enough for me to paint, I don't want to overlap and create some tiny little sliver. So this can be either a stack of three or a stack of two. And I'm going to make mine probably a stack of three. But I want to take a look at it once I get my second size on there. Um, yeah, I'm going to do another one. And I'm going to use my nickel for this one. No, yeah, let me use my nickel. All right. Now, so I've got my four, three, two, one, 
my overlap. Now, I've got to, let's count how many I've got. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, the goal is to have between 15 and 20 circles. We don't want it to look so busy that it is like cluttered, but we don't want to have any large open areas. So I'm going to do up here, um, I'm going to do one that goes out on this side, and it's going to go out more than this one. So I want to try and create some variety. So I'm going to let this one look like it is going out here. Okay, and I'm going to do something here. It feels like it's missing. I'm going to put one. I could do another. No, I don't want to do that. I'm going to do this. Do a partial right here. All right, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I have 16. And I actually think that it doesn't look cluttered. I don't have anything that's empty. I am going to maybe put something inside of this. Uh, I'm going to do, man, I wish I had one more, a little smaller than this, because um, this has the same width here and here. I think I'll try to use the bottom of this thing. And if it's too similar, I may make it into a three. No, I'm going to leave it just like it is. All right, now we're ready for your lines. So no more than 20 circles, and we're ready for our lines. The first line you're going to do, and you're going to have about six lines, is must go from, et, from side to side and cut all the way through. So I'm going to cut through here. That breaks up this empty spot here. The next one must intersect this first line, and it should not go edge to edge. So I'm going to start this one here. It's going to start on the edge of this circle up here, so not on the edge, but I have to pick an anchor point. I don't want it floating in the air, and it's going to pull through and go to here. That's line two, must intersect and should not be edge to edge. The next one I'm going to do is going to um, be a broken line, and I'm going to do that one <coughs> here. I'm going to actually start here, and I'm going to go do this space, then I'm going to skip. I'm going to do this space, and I'm going to skip. I'm going to do this space, and I'm going to skip. So there's my broken line. Those are the three that are required. Now you can choose the next three. Those are of your choice. I am going to do one that breaks up some of this. So I'm going to do another broken line in here, but I'm not going to run it through the center. I'm actually going to run it off-centered here, and I'm going to start here, one, skip, here, skip, here, skip, and then I'm going to go out to this edge so that I break up some of this background. So that's going to be one. So that's my fourth line. I'm going to do something to break up this. I'm going to pull like side to side, so it's not going across, but it's going to be side to side. Um, hmm. It's a lot like these that are here, so I'm going to alter that. I do want to break up the space, though. I'm going to do something more like this. All right, so that's my fifth. So I have one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to look if there's any other areas or anything that's big or a big background space that needs broken up. And if I have one, I'll break it up. If not, I can use this any way I want. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to come into this one right here, and I'm going to break up on this side. I'm going to pull a line starting here and going out to this edge. That will just break up some of these larger circles. And there's my six lines. The next thing is to trace it in Micron. So the easiest ones to do first will be the straight lines. You're just going to make sure you're holding the ruler. You're always in a pull. And you will trace the straight lines. Always lining up, making sure you're really holding the ruler so it's not moving. 
making sure you don't have any lines that are floating and not connecting to something. So you would trace all of your straight lines. And I'm not going to trace them all because you don't need to watch me trace. But I need to give you the strategy for tracing the circles so that they will look clean. One thing is uh, we're not going to try and trace around objects with a micron pen. If there's any errors, you can't get rid of them. We're also not going to try and pull a circle freehand like this because we're working blind. We'll see the circle on part of it and our hand is blocking it. So we're not going to do that. What we are going to do is this. We're going to do the circles segment by segment, meaning I'm going to pull a section, then I'm going to turn the paper, and I'm going to pull the next section, and then I'm going to turn the paper, and I'm going to pull the next section. And each circle I'm going to do like this. And this is probably the most time-consuming part of this thing, once you have it mapped out. But you're not having to do much thinking. You're just having to focus and do your best to trace on them. If you have a tiny miss where it bobbles a little bit off the circle, just try to gently put it back on track. As long as you don't create something that looks like an egg in the end where it's like feels like it's very off, it's probably fine. So once you have it traced, here's one that's traced. I've traced over my circles. You can see I have a few little bobbles, but overall, everything reads still as a circle. My straight lines are nice and straight. The last thing is to come in with a kneaded eraser and to erase away all of the pencil lines. We need to get rid of all of that pencil before we add color next class. You will have two classes to add color um, and that is it. So come to class next time prepared on watercolor paper in micron pen, pencil erased, 15 to 20 circles. You must have a 4, a 3, a 2, an overlap that's either a 2 or a 3. And then you have to have at least them going out on the sides, corner, and make sure you don't have any long edges with nothing on it but it should not be overly crowded and tight. If your circles are too close together, you will not be able to paint between them. So my recommendation would be to get another piece of watercolor paper, pick different circles, and try again. You have six pieces of watercolor paper in there. I've allotted two for this project. So if you messed up on your first one, get your next one and try again. Because with 50 more product points to go on this assignment, you want your drawing to be done well.